Welcome to Real Food, and today I'm going to talk about potatoes, and um, it's quite cold already, it's end of November here in London, in the UK, and um, I've just been to my local food store, and I discovered that um, we actually have real food shortages these days, and this is not because of lockdown or anything, um, there was a real food shortage, you know, I, I was just um, in an M&S food store, and usually they're really well stocked, um, they're well managed, and... Um, and just now, um, on a Saturday afternoon, I saw nearly half the store shelves, actually empty shelves. And things that were like really um, out of stock in there, I found were eggs, cream, uh, fresh produce, um, lots of vegetables were out of stock. There were no berries like strawberries or anything like this. I mean, they're usually well stocked and um, there's never usually a problem. And because it was slightly unusual, I thought I'd chat to them, to one of them people in the store. And they told me, I thought maybe it's just, you know, I missed, um, uh, it's just bad timing. I, I've just arrived, but they will be restocking maybe, let's say, in an hour or in two hours. And everything's going to be back. And I actually asked him, I said, um, look, do you actually have maybe at the back, you know, because I need cream and I need, because I'm actually preparing these, um, I want to make really creamy potatoes. And he said, no, he said, we don't. And and I said, well, is this um, a temporary problem he, he, and he said well we've had a few deliveries already and we are simply not getting the actual produce um so that was really alarming so but uh, anyway um so this is where we are but i still nevertheless want to to make because it's cold today i still want to make um creamy mashed potatoes and i want also i want them to be seasoned with nice um things like maybe um, caramelized onions or or fresh onions fried maybe with herbs and spices and maybe yeah I just want them seasoned maybe with some carrots also grilled fried um, like like a nice topping on on my on my creamy mashed potatoes because it's cold and um, and I want this to be buttery creamy and and these these are potatoes I could get in an MS store they they say they're baking but I'm going to make them into mash and so I've already peeled this one. I'm going to peel. I think these two are going to be enough for me. So I'm going to peel, to peel this one with my peeler. And um, at the same time, I'm going to chat with with you guys. Um, so um, because I know um, some of you are in different countries, um, do um, do comment in the comment section under this video what's going on in your countries. Um, are you also having food shortages in your countries? I know there are problems in Europe um, and in the UK, um, based on what our news are telling us, and of course you can't trust even news anymore these days. <laughs> Everything is a bit doctored, a bit political, a bit, you know. So, but anyway, the news are telling us that, um, the news are saying that there's some kind of avian flu. So it's like another flu that, um, that our birds are, are getting sick with and um and it's affecting they say it's affecting chickens um but it could affect other birds so they're warning to keep birds um if you if you have your own birds to keep them indoors um so i'm just going to cut these um um s small slightly damaged areas away and i think my potatoes um this is pretty much good I, you know i just need to cut them in slightly smaller pieces so this um, goes to the bin yeah but going back to this um the flu situation yeah so they say because of bird flu um there's an egg shortage but you know what i was just talking to a friend of mine and uh, there are already also farmers protesting and saying what you're hearing is not true because the shortage of eggs in supermarkets isn't because of bird flu or anything like this it's because the supermarkets are refusing to buy them at correct prices and farmers are saying they're not even increasing the price too much but the supermarkets are simply not willing to buy so the shortage seems to be driven by a number of factors here and some of these factors may not be you know what what our newspapers are telling us officially because the farmers are telling us a different story they're saying supermarkets are being dishonest so I'm going to cut these into, um, I don't want these slices to be too thin um, because apparently that can create a situation where too much water enters 
my potatoes, right? Um, but at the same time, also, I don't want to spend too much time boiling because another problem, as you all know, electricity is really expensive now in, in the UK and in London. So we people can hardly afford heating and eating. So um, so I don't want to spend too much time boiling and, you know, the heat. And then because my my kitchen is completely electric, I have no gas. So I've already got some some of my potatoes in this um, pan, and I'm gonna think. I think I'm just gonna finish this one. I'm gonna do the same. I think that's enough potatoes, um, definitely. Um, and then I'm going to um, I'm going to boil them. Yes, and I was saying that I don't want to to take too much time boiling because electricity is really expensive. And again, I don't know, guys, which countries you are from. I know in Europe there's also a similar problem with electricity um costs are very high there was even an article in the news saying that um a hotel owner in italy in sicily apparently um received his latest electricity bill um and it was like something like 80000 euros compared to his previous bill which was only 9000 euros can you imagine this and apparently that hotel owner um had a heart attack when he literally he had a heart attack when he received this because the hotel has to now ha will have to close. Yeah, it's it's a really high bill. You know, I don't know if I would have a heart attack, but I'd certainly be um, in trouble if I had such kind of bill. Also, if and and I was running um, the hotel. So yeah, so he had to be hospitalized. That um, that gentleman in Sicily, and this is really really worrying because here in the UK we've got similar problems. We don't know what kind of bills we're going to have soon um, because they're going to increase the bills again this April apparently so yeah so okay so this I'm now going to add water and this is going to go on um, boiling okay so guys and while my uh, potatoes are boiling I was going to show you what how I'm going to season my potatoes with something um, some vegetables more vegetables so I've got these onions um, salad onions and I've got this shallot. I think I'm going to chop both of them, and I'm going to um, I'm going to fry them gently in butter, oil, um, caramelize them, and they will be a, a nice topping. Another good option is gravy. But also, I was going to tell you guys, I've actually I bought some cheese, and I bought a, a raclette, like a small pan where I can melt cheese, and I think that cheese can also go on top, so that would be quite nice. So this is what potentially I'm going to do. And um, I'm going to start uh, with um, you know, these salad onions. They're really, really nice caramelized, but I'm also going to leave one fresh stem to simply finish off the, my um, to finish off my um, my mashed potatoes with also like a little bit of fresh. Um, sort of there's some, so, so that there's a little bit of fresh taste there as well. So I mean, then unusual shapes, but yeah, but I think it should be fine. So this can go in the in the bin. So yeah, but these I'm going to gently caramelize in in butter. Yeah, and that will be nice. Yeah. So we we're, guys, we're basically chatting about this electricity cost of electricity, which is really high and um and yeah so if you are in um in europe i imagine you've got similar problems but if you are in other countries do update let us know if the situation is any better in your country um i know that um some countries have better situation with their electricity and energy than others so it's not all um the same everywhere um it is certainly very similar in europe um we're all kind of in this similar difficult situation with very high prices and um, um, also these energy companies are taking advantage they are earning excessive profits and the governments aren't even taxing them properly so um, so it's a difficult um, difficult situation so okay so this goes now here and I could potentially now do my shallot so the shallot is supposed to be easy to to work with. Apparently I've seen how they do it, so they cut here and then you can just unwrap 
yeah, oh, that's it. So that's really nice and easy, yeah. So, and another one maybe? Okay, oh, the second layer, this last layer doesn't. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I'm trying to, oh yeah, that's it. So I might get another layer also off, but that should be okay. That's it. So, so, so yeah, so the situation is getting really difficult and I also um, seen reports that in Germany some bakeries, um, they are shutting down because electricity costs are so high that um, bakery owners, they can't afford staff because they have to pay, spend all their money on electricity. And I've seen these owners from bakeries actually inside bakeries trying to do as much work as they can themselves. But that's obviously, as you can imagine, also it's basically your last attempt to save the business. But, um, you know, the costs are so high that they actually had to either close many bakeries or um, like I've even seen um, shops in Germany, like cafes and bakeries, also using candlelight um, to replace electricity and to kind of to save electricity. It's all really shocking. It's like it looks like Europe is being plunged into dark ages again. So, um, and in many ways, it's it's you know it's um, it's the leadership in the EU that created these problems. And they created all these um, difficulties and dis disagreements around the world. With um, created conflicts around the world um, and in Europe in particular, so and they're, and they're blaming it all on one country. I'm not going to mention. I'm not going to name any anyone here because this is not a political um, blog. But it's it's just difficult for everybody, even when it comes to to kitchen these days. <laughs> okay, well let's see what what's going on with my potatoes. My potatoes are now boiling, so this is where they are, and my seasoning is now. I'm gonna, going to add butter, and I'm going to start caramelizing these onions. Also, I'm thinking, while I'm preparing my seasoning, I might add... This is what I want to add. I want to add some... I want to add a carrot, because carrot is a very interesting vegetable. You know, some people, and I know a lot of people like it raw, fresh, um, and even there's carrot juice, people like carrot juice, but... Um, um, but um, apparently the most beneficial aspects of carrots, they are easily absorbed. For example, these orangey carotenoids that are very good for your, for your vision, they are more easily absorbed if they are actually consumed with butter, apparently. Um, so, so carrots um, gently fried in butter apparently are much more... Um, much more beneficial in terms of in terms of um, how we absorb nutrients so and um, that's why I also want to cut them into very small these tiny pieces because I want because I want these carrots you know I know carrots take time to if you're trying to to fry them they take time to actually cook um, and to speed up this process because I don't want my um, onions also um, to go very dark brown, so I want to speed up this process, and um, so I want my carrots to um, to cook quicker. So, and one way to do this is to cut them into smaller pieces. And of course, we already discussed um, electricity is very expensive, so it's I don't want to spend too much time burning electricity um, when frying these carrots. So yeah, so if you cut them into these really small um, pieces, then it's much easier than to um, to cook them, apparently. And I did use this method before; it does really work. So that's it. I think this um, addition of carrots is going to work really well. So I'm now going to show you what I've got in my frying pan. So I've got these carrots, onions, and you know these bits, these dark brown bits. These are actual uh, raisins. I think they add a little bit of sweetness, and I think it's a good idea to, um, I mean, it's up to you if you want to, but I wanted to experiment and add these as well. 
and when um, when they're combined with onions and carrots, I think it will create a really nice um, seasoning for my mashed potatoes. So another thing I didn't add just yet is um, um, salt. Yeah, you do need to add salt. Um, so I'm going to add some salt flakes. And maybe a little bit more later. I don't want to over salt it. And my mashed potatoes are still boiling. I think I need a bit more time. They're not ready yet. Yeah, that's right. So um so when this is done, I want them to be creamy. I want I will add butter, I will add maybe a little bit of cream, and the seasoning this is my seasoning that I'm preparing it's here. Okay, I've got my potatoes now ready for mashing. They're nice and soft, and I've got some butter. And um, here, this you know, I'm going to share share with you another trick. You know, you you probably seen that you need some special equipment to press them, um, and then you know you you have to wash those um, special like um, mashing mashing tools. But you know what? You don't need anything except fork, because look, you can do it all with just fork, and you can then move your butter around to make um to make your mash softer and a simple fork and then there's um a lot less for you to wash there's less washing up to do and look how easy it is to mash with fork you can take a bigger fork for example if um if um if you want uh, to make it even easier but because it's a relatively small pan you know i use this small silver fork and look how easy it is so you can Oh, it's, a, it's it's going to be really nice mashed potatoes and because I want it creamy so I've got this butter and I'm also going to add actually some actual cream in addition to butter look at this it looks gorgeous I like what it looks like so I'm going to add some salt now I'm going to use these salt flakes I don't want it to add too much I don't want to over salt to make it too salty but look how nice and um, and creamy it gets with butter but I think butter alone isn't enough because there's a lot it still looks quite dry so I'm going to start adding now some cream and cream looks really delicious so let's see Okay, I'm going to do one splash at a time because I don't want to, again, to overdo on cream. I don't want to for, for my mashed potatoes to turn too runny. So I just want it nice. And you see, when you do it with a fork, you also get to feel how much um, sort of consistency, what kind of consistency you, you want. Um, uh, do you want, like, a, a small lumps also in your mashed potatoes? A lump, like um, you know then you can just stop now for example I think it's already it's already there so this is quite a good mash mm, but if you want it even smoother and creamier you can carry on and you do it to your own liking with your fork and then this same fork can be used to eat it so you you save time and money on um, on washing up on oh my god it does taste already very good it is still very very dry I think I could add a little bit more cream but also I need to remember that my seasoning is also this butter this, this it's quite creamy so but just a little bit more I think it will it will work really well and another idea I had is to add eggs or egg yolk but I think in this case because I've got really nice seasoning um, I don't need um, egg because I've got cream and butter already added here so I think it's already looking pretty good I think that's that should be enough so now I've got this really nice consistency of a of a really good mash look at this um, so butter and cream um, made this texture really nice and smooth now absolutely fantastic really and you can you I'm doing it all with just a fork 
Can you believe this? A simple fork. You don't need any special equipment or tools. So I can see like a few lumps in there. But I mean, if you like them, you can you can keep them. If you like to feel like bits of potatoes, that should be fine. Okay, let me try what it tastes like. Mmm. It's really amazing. It's really nice. This is gorgeous. Well, and now, this is the time to add perhaps my seasoning. And look, look what nice addition this will be. There's also butter there, and all these gorgeous ingredients. So I've got onions, raisins, and there, look at that. My carrots also really well cooked now. So I'm going to add all of this. Mm, I want to use it all because it's so good. It, and you know guys, it smells so nice. It's absolutely phen phenomenal. The smell I really enjoy. Um, so, so the seasoning now is in. I mean, you don't have to do it exactly the way I've done it. Mm, you can add your seasoning on the side, but I think for best mm, for for infusion of flavors and for ease of um, serving, you can serve out of here or even eat directly out of your pan. I mean, if it's just for one person, um, it will cool down a little, and um, you can um, serve it into plates from here. But also, this is to show you how easy and quickly we created this um, highly delicious, highly nutritious. Um, meal. Let me try this now. Mm, it's amazing. It's everything I wanted on a cold November day. Yeah, it's perfect. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you can also cook something similar and and um, and enjoy it yourself. Do share your own recipes and um, recommendations. What else could be added here? And we'll chat again soon.